Oh my gosh, welcome back to my channel. Okay, I am so excited. We are gonna be using Puxy Sculpt to make a 3D tumbler. Who's excited? I'm excited. Oh my gosh. Okay, you're gonna need gloves because um, Poxy Sculpt does have some epoxy components in it. And I don't even know if that's how you say it. I just felt so cool saying that. Um, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna mix equal parts A and B. And so the best way to do that is to take a little bit of part A and shape it into a ball, okay? And once you have it nice and shaped, you are gonna go ahead and do the same thing with part B. You're gonna grab a part of part B and you're gonna shape it into a little ball. And then you just wanna put them side by side and just make sure that they're as close in size as possible. Um, this is my first time working with Poxy Sculpt. I was super nervous. I've never sculpted anything in my life. Um, but I know that there's a lot of amazing people out there that create beautiful things. One of my really good friends, um, Jen, from Jen's Crafted Gems. She has been doing dragon eyes and all sorts of really cool things um, for a really long time. And I've just always been too afraid to try to sculpt anything. So I was like, you know what? Let me stay in my peasant lane and start with something very simple that I can't possibly mess up. So um, if you guys are doing this for the first time, so am I. So you got this. So I switched over to some tighter gloves because those other ones were like falling off my hands and it was hard to, to, to work with them. But so once you have both of the little balls, you just want to mix them together. Okay. And I did this for about two minutes until they were completely mixed. And I don't know how to describe the way the consistency of the poxy sculpt was. It was very light and fluffy. Um, I've played with clay before, not to sculpt, just like in life. And clay is a little bit hard. After a while, I feel like your fingers kind of hurt. A po or poxy sculpt is not like that. It's very fluffy, you know? It's very easy, very easy to work with, very manageable. So for a first timer like me, I really liked it. And this is definitely what I'm going to try to use moving forward because I'm super duper obsessed. And if you guys do want to order this, I do have a coupon. I do have a discount code for you guys, which I'll put in the description. Save yourself some money and use that money for, I don't know, activities, a church donation, strippers. I don't know. I don't judge you. Listen, I love you unconditionally, okay? No matter what. So... I did this for about two minutes and I just mixed it up really good. And then I was like, okay, here goes nothing. Close your eyes. Just kidding. Don't close your eyes. You really need to pay attention to what you're doing. Okay. Um, so then I basically just divided them up into little sections and rolled them up into little balls. My goal for this was to have four little sections so that they could be the little feet to the cauldron. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. I literally had to ask my best friend what it was called. I was like, Hey, the Mexican in me doesn't know what a witch's bowl is called. I literally called it a witch's bowl. She was like, a cauldron? And I'm like, sure, yeah. So if I'm pronouncing it wrong, you guys already know what it is. I was born with a sombrero, so prr, actually, wow. I was born with a sombrero. Look at me not pronouncing it right. My mom would smack me in my mouth right now. Okay, anyway, so... Like I totally, like there's no tutorial out there. At least I didn't see one of a cauldron. So guys, when I tell you I was winging it the whole time, I was winging it. Not only was this my first time working with Poxy Sculpt, my first time trying to sculpt anything, but I literally just had a vision in my head of what I wanted and I kind of just ran with it. And that's why I always tell you guys, take risks, okay? Take risks because it's worth it. You know, I could have totally messed this up and not had a tutorial, but I just wanted to give you guys something amazing. You know, before I went on vacation, I feel like I was in a creative funk. I felt like I was making sure pretty cups, but I just felt like I wasn't creating anything like crazy awesome. And I was like, no, I've got to like, I've got to think, I've got to think I need to give my sweet baddies something better. And so I came up with quite a few ideas while I was gone. And this is just one of them. Um, I am going to try to film as many of these videos as I can. They're a little more time consuming because the designs are a little bit more complex. Um, but I do have some really cute things. So saddle up ladies. And I'm just going to tell you right now, you're going to need more poxy sculpt. So just so you know. Okay, guys. So 
I went ahead and just made the four little balls a little bit smaller because I realized that the bottom part of the wine tumbler isn't very big. So I didn't want the little legs to be too big. So once I had them all, what I did is I started placing them on the bottom of the tumbler. It, does, it doesn't have to be perfect. You guys already know me. I'm not like a person who measures or anything like that. I always eyeball everything. So I just kind of put, you know, a little ball in each corner. And what you want to do is you just want to press down the edges so that it'll stick to the um, stainless steel. I did prep my tumbler. I sanded it and cleaned it off with alcohol before I started applying these little legs. Now, I know right now it looks like weird shapes, but it's okay. What you want to do is you want to make sure that you're really adhering it to the stainless steel. And then once it's really on there, you can kind of focus on shaping the actual part of the little leg. And obviously right now it's super noticeable, like where the epoxy sculpt starts and where the stainless steel is. But once you spray paint this black, it is going to all blend together and look amazing. Okay, now a little trick that I did um, just to make sure that when I stood this on its little legs that it was going to be completely even. Once I finished sculpting the little legs the way that I wanted, also another cool thing about Poxy Sculpt, guys, is that it adheres to your cup like nobody's business. There are some clays out there that you have to bake. This is not one of those. You literally just mix it, apply it, let it dry, and then that's it. That's what I think that's what's so amazing about this too. Um, but anyway, so once I went ahead and had everything shaped how I wanted it, I took my tumbler and I placed it flat, like on its little legs so that they would all get flat and even. Okay. That way, whenever they dry, I'm not like, oh my gosh, they weren't even. And now I have a wobbly cup. So that's just a little tip. Um, so once I did the little legs, I set it to the side and I let that dry and I went ahead and started in with the little handles that are on the side of the cauldron. Now, it's very it was very simple because the, it's literally just a little circle with like a little top handle part. So I basically just um, rolled a little tiny skinny worm snake. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Hee <laughs> hee. So I just rolled it. And then once I had it <clears throat> long and skinny, like my body, just kidding. I'm not long and skinny. I'm short and fluffy. I'm thicker than a snicker, especially after my vacation. Man, whoever said vacation calories don't count is a liar. Anyway, so I went ahead and just rolled it, rolled it, rolled it, rolled it until it was nice and even. Okay. And mind you guys, this entire time I'm winging it. I'm saying a prayer in my head. I'm like, dear Lord, please don't embarrass me in front of my baddies. Please let this cup turn out because I really want to do something cool for them. So thank you, Lord. And if you guys just say a little prayer, everything's going to be okay. Or cross your fingers or just cross or close your eyes and then just pray that when you open them, everything worked out. Hee <laughs> hee. Just kidding. Uh, don't do that. So, okay guys. Wow. I'm doing a lot of rolling here. Okay. So rolly, rolly, roll. <laughs> rolly, poly, -oly. Oh my God. Who used to watch rolly, poly, -oly? No, no, no. Don't get sidetracked, Myra. Okay. Once I had it rolled to where I needed it, I took an X-Acto knife and I cut two little worms, snakes, I don't know, the size that, to, to make sure that they were the same size. And this is what I used to make the little handles on the side of the tumbler. Now you want to make sure that you don't put your uh, tumbler on its little feet until it's completely dry and hard. And hey, I do say that my videos are not for children. Oh, don't come for, don't come for me in my inheritance of $5. Okay. So I, li I literally just shaped it into a circle or as close to a circle as I could. And then I used my X-Acto knife to push down the epoxy sculpt into the tumbler and it adhered really quickly. I mean, guys, this stuff is really awesome. So I went ahead and just pushed it down with my X-Acto knife because my fingers were sticky because I was sweaty and I'm a sweaty, slimy sausage. So that's why I used a different object to push the clay down. And once it was completely adhered, I took one of my booger hooks and I kind of just went around and smoothed out any texture that I might've added with the X-Acto knife and just kind of rubbed it and made sure that it was really on there and made sure that it was smooth. And it was that, it was literally that simple, you guys. Then I came in and did the exact same thing on the other side. And like I said, some of you might be super, um, like I know a lot of people like things to be perfect and perfectly round. Um, I, I'm not like that. So if you wanted to use some sort of mold or something so that you have the perfect shapes, you absolutely could do that. 
I am more of a, I'm going to eyeball this and pray to the Lord. It comes out good. Hee hee. Maybe I have no business doing YouTube. Um, and so that's just kind of how I did it. And I'm pretty satisfied with how it came out. So, um, I think that you're okay if you just kind of do that, but you're welcome to do measurements and molds. If that helps you, you definitely can put this stuff in molds, which is amazing. Okay. So once I had the two little handles on there, the two little circles, I just took a little piece of tiny, a little tiny piece of poxy sculpt, and I basically just turned it into a little ball, and I just put it at the very top. You know how they have the little handle thingy, the little handle grabby, barry, circle, roundy thingy? Well, that's basically what I'm doing here, just to give it a little bit of depth and texture so that it didn't just look like I slapped a circle on there. You know what I'm saying? So I went ahead and did that, and I did it on both sides. And then, so the work time for this poxy sculpt is about two hours. You can probably have more than two hours, but I would it gets a little bit harder. So from the time that you mix equal parts A and B, you have a total of like two to two and a half hours to work with it before it gets way too hard for you to like maneuver and stuff. So I think that's pretty impressive. Um, and then once I was done, I just set my tumbler aside for about... An, uh, I would probably say like two hours. Um, and while that was setting, we came in to do the topper. Okay. Now I sanded the um, topper just because I wanted my glue to really adhere. And I do want to tell you guys that I, this cup is not for sale. I'm keeping this cup because this was um, an experiment. I was like just kind of going with a flow. And so um, this one, I'm going to keep it. So if you were doing this for a customer or something like that, you would just want to be super duper careful um, and consider where they're going to put their lips. In my opinion, this type of tumbler, you can't put your lips on it. You just can't because it's a cool 3D topper type. So <clears throat> it would be a tumbler that you would only be able to use with a straw, which in my opinion, it's worth it to have a super duper cool cup and just drink out of a straw. So moving right along, what you see me doing here is I am filling the base of the lid with a whole bunch of hot glue. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want this to be 3D. I want it to poke up above, like above the, where the lid, um, how, how do I say this? You know what I'm saying? Like basically when you, when you come eye level with a lid, I want the like bubbles and the pearls to stick up, right? So in order not to waste a lot of pearls, you want to fill the base of that with a whole bunch of um, hot glue so that when you do start applying your pearls on there, they stick up. Now, these are half pearls that I got off of Amazon and they worked perfectly. If I could be totally honest, there's only one thing I would have probably done differently, but I didn't have time. I would have wanted bigger pearls um, for it to have like a bigger bubble effect. So I came up with this idea while I was in Colorado. Actually, before I get into that story, guys, so basically all you're going to do is you're going to use a wax pen. They have those on Amazon. I will link it. Okay. You're going to use a hot glue gun, apply your hot glue to the air designated area, and then you're just going to take your wax pen and you're going to apply your half pearls to where the hot glue is. Okay. There's no rhyme or reason, no specific pattern. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's okay if there's a little bit of space in between them. At the end of the day, this is supposed to be like bubbling poison and it's not supposed to be pretty or perfect. It's just supposed to be like bubbly and bumpy. So don't get too caught up in like the texture of how it looks okay now here these pearls that I put here I they weren't really sticking up like that much to where they looked 3d and so I ended up stopping and adding more glue on top thank goodness I, I checked it before I added a whole bunch more half pearls because I really wanted this to like stick up and look like it was bubbling over if that makes sense so I would recommend that when you're doing this, just add as much hot glue to the base as possible and hold it at eye level so that when you start to lay your pearls, they're like super duper 3D and sticking up, okay? So it's super easy. And I got this glue gun and the glue sticks on Amazon and I think it was under $10 and it came with like 30 glue sticks. So it was perfect. So I went ahead and just fill, oh my gosh, excuse me guys I did not brush my hair this day please don't judge me please don't come for me please don't unsubscribe and also I promise I promise I will remove my 
super ghetto <laughs> nail polish. I promise. So once I filled a little bit more, I went ahead and I went in with my glue gun and I just started going to town with all the half pearls. Okay. I wanted them to be all the way up to the very edge because I wanted to make the a drip. I'm going to make a drip and I want it to be really flush and just look like it's literally bubbling over. And so this was really fun to make you guys. And honestly, it wasn't as time consuming as you would think. It didn't take as long to place these pearls as you would rhinestones because rhinestones are tiny. And these ones were not that tiny. But let me tell you how this tumbler came about. So when I was in Colorado on vacation, I was telling my friend, I was like, you know, I feel like I haven't had an amazing idea in a long time. I feel like I'm always in a hurry. I'm always like just doing my best to, you know, stay above water. And so I feel like it hasn't given me time to sit down and really come up with like incredible ideas. I'm like, and I feel like my sweet baddies deserve the best. They deserve top of the line, amazing ideas that they can recreate and something really cool. Now, of course, you guys know my channel is super diverse. So of course, I'm gonna do simple cups. I'm gonna do um, beginner's cups. I'm gonna do advanced designs. But overall, I really wanted to do something unique. And I really wanted to do an ice topper for you guys. Those are so beautiful, but they're everywhere right now. Um, and so I just really didn't wanna do another ice topper. I wanted to come up with something brand new for you guys, something different. And I was like, oh my gosh, like literally I was sitting with her in her kitchen and I was like, what if I took a wine tumbler and I turned it into one of those witch's bowls and she was like a cauldron. And I was like, yeah, I was like, I know exactly how I could do that. I have poxy sculpt at home and like those half, you know, crafting pearls, I could hot glue those on. Like literally just the idea just snowballed and I wrote it down in my notes. And while I was in Colorado, I went on Amazon and I ordered all of my supplies. So when I got home Thursday evening, I was already like excited. And Friday morning, I hit the ground running with everything that I had received from Amazon. And I just started putting this together. And it was just, it was just amazing, you guys. And so I think like what I'm trying to tell you is don't be afraid to think outside the box and come up with something super different. And even if in your head, you're like, you know what? I really just don't know if this is going to work, if I'm going to mess this up, if it's going to be ugly. That's okay because the worst thing that can happen is that it doesn't turn out how you want and you start over or you adjust your idea and you come up with revisions that will work better. You know, you have to take risks in order to create amazing things. And I was so nervous when I was making this, guys. I was so nervous because I wasn't able to give you guys a tutorial on Saturday because I had just gotten back. And so I was like, oh my gosh, I'm taking a big risk because if this doesn't work out, I'm not going to have a tutorial for Tuesday either. Oh my gosh. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to go for it. So I did, and I'm super happy with how it turned out. And I think that this is something that even a beginner um, could put together because like I said, I'd never done anything like this before. And it was, it was pretty simple, you guys. So I really think that you're all going to be able to recreate this if you want. And you can even add a decal if you want. I didn't want to add like a witch's brew decal or anything just because I've already done a cup like that before. And I really wanted this one to just be very... I don't know, like realistic, like, you know, how the real cauldrons don't have any writing on them. I just wanted it to be like that. So once I finished placing all my half pearls and once the hot glue dried, which guys, it dried in like 10 minutes, which is the amazing thing. I took my dispersion colors that I got from CCDIY. I will link them in the, in the description of my video and I will have a discount code for you guys so you can have some ratchet money left over. Also, would this even be a Myra Makes It tutorial if I wasn't spilling stuff and messing stuff up? <laughs> I poured too much color in and I spilled it everywhere. Hee hee, please don't leave me because I'm a sloppy. I'm a sloppy loo. Okay, so once I got that ratchetness cleaned up, I just took a fine... Um, eyeshadow brush. You can get these on Amazon. It doesn't matter the brand. Any eyeshadow set brush that you get on Amazon will work for all these fine details. And basically what I'm doing is I'm just taking my eyeshadow brush, dipping into that dispersion color, and just making sure I'm getting in the nooks and crevices, 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 
I've used that word before. Why can't I think about it? Just in all the nook and crannies and all the little spaces, want to make sure there's a lot of like color in there. And you also want to make sure that you're not putting on a super thick coat of paint because you don't want to lose the details of the pearls. So if you see here, I'm kind of just dabbing and pushing that paint into the into all the little holes and all the little like curves and stuff. That's because I don't want the paint to flood the pearls and for you to lose that bubbly detail, okay? This tutorial's already pretty long, so I'm not gonna make you guys watch me paint this whole thing white. Once I was done painting this white, I set it aside for about an hour or so, and then I came back in and I did my green, and I'm gonna show you guys how I did that. As you guys can see, I already had tried to paint green over the white, but I'm a super duper impatient person and I tried to add the green way before the white was dry. And so my green and my white started mixing and creating this lighter shade of green, which is not the look I was going for. So I had to set it aside and let it dry for a little bit longer. So um, just be patient, you guys. Set this aside for about an hour or so just to make sure it's super dry because um, those little like cor like holes and crevices where you're getting the paint in, they don't dry as fast. Learned that the hard way. But listen, I'm here so that you guys could learn from my mistakes. Okay, okay. So guys, this video is incredibly long and I'm so sorry. I just, I feel like there's so many steps to this video and I really want you guys to walk away from this understanding exactly how this is done because I want you guys to tag me when you make this so I can see how boss ass you all are. And so I just really didn't want to leave anything out, but I'm not going to make you guys watch me paint this entire thing green because <clears throat> I feel like it's very self-explanatory. Um, once the white is dry, you basically just want to go in with green and fill it in, okay? And it doesn't have to be, well, I mean, get full coverage over the white, but if you feel like the green is not deep enough, that's okay because we're going to add this same dispersion color to our epoxy when we epoxy this lid. So it's going to be okay. I promise. And I'll show you guys exactly how we're going to do that. Once your epoxy sculpt is completely dry, go ahead and use any black spray paint you want and spray paint your tumbler. And once that and the lid are completely dry, we can go ahead and go in with our epoxy. I am using medium viscosity. It's my favorite. I really like the, I really like that it's like a lighter like viscosity. It's runny because I feel like it goes a long way and also it's a lot easier to pop any micro bubbles because there's not a super thick coat, if that makes sense. So what I'm doing here is right now I'm just trying to get epoxy over every single part of the tumbler and then I am going to use my gloved finger and remove any excess that's inside of the little circles, all of the little handles, because I don't want there to be a pool of epoxy in there to where I'm like, okay, it lost its shape because there's so much epoxy that you can't see where like the 3D handle is. So as your, as your cup is turning, just go ahead and kind of stick your, fing your gloved finger in there, um, remove any of that excess, do the same thing on the outside of the handle, okay? Now we want our first coat to be pretty thin and we don't have any glitter or anything like that, so we don't need to worry about that full coverage or anything like that. Right now we just wanna get our first coat of epoxy on there and make sure that we don't have like pools of epoxy where the handles go, okay? And then we're gonna pop our torch. I'm sorry. <laughs> we're gonna pop our bubbles with a torch. Um, and then we're gonna move on and I'm gonna show you guys how I epoxied the lid. You are gonna need a very small, fine paintbrush for the lid part, okay? Now with the epoxy that's left over, we are going to take our green dispersion color and we are gonna add it in there, okay? Now, I did make a tiny mistake. I added way too much heat to this tumbler and I'll show you what the effect of that is gonna be in a second and I'll show you how to fix that. That's why I left that part in the video because I'm gonna show you how to fix that problem. It's super simple. So, once we did that, um, I went ahead and added the same green dispersion color to the leftover epoxy so that we could use it on our lid, okay? Because you want your whole tumbler to be super glossy, okay? Because remember, it's all one piece and um, the poison is overflowing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this um, small little paintbrush that you see right here. I got it in a set that I got at Walmart. So they're very easily found there or at Joanne, or I'm sure if you go to Michael's, you can find it too. Now, the same thing is gonna happen when you're applying epoxy to your lid, okay? You wanna make sure that you take your time and not necessarily try to do very large amounts of epoxy. We don't want there to be a pool 
of epoxy to where you're not you're gonna lose all the fine detail on that topper okay you want it to look bubbly like it's bubbling and so um, I just went ahead and just kind of took my time, did very thin, 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 thin coats, um, and just kind of made sure I was getting every single little area, every single little spot. Um, and also because it had green dispersion ink in it or paints in it, it kind of created like these little sections that were a little darker than others. And I felt like that made it look a little bit even more realistic. Okay. Now take your time doing this part, guys. It didn't take me very long. It probably took me about, I don't know, two to three minutes to do the lid. And this was just because I was making sure there were no dry spots, um, that I was just, you know, making sure I had full coverage. I only did one coat over the lid. And the reason I only did one coat is because I'm not selling this tumbler, nor will I be using it. I am going to keep it and I am going to have it on display in my craft, um, my craft area. So that's why I wasn't too worried about doing two coats. But after this coat dries, you could come back in with a clear coat just to make sure that it's super duper sealed. Um, so that is that, so that I feel like I keep saying, um, I'm sorry, guys, I'm going to work on that. I promise. Okay. You guys already know I'm a ratchet family dollar tutorial maker. Oh, don't leave me. Okay. So I went ahead and just make sure, made sure everything was covered. Don't forget the bottom part of the half pearls. Um, it can be really, uh, I said, um, again, uh, it can be really easy to forget those little details because sometimes I feel like we focus on the top and the sides. So just make sure you're very thorough. <gasps> Look at me using the word thorough. I'm bougie. You know what? I'm moving up to Walmart tutorial maker. So we're going to set that aside and let it dry overnight. Now here's the result of me adding too much heat. Okay. There's dimples. I'm not worried about that. You guys, I'm not worried about it because they're not that big of a deal. And when I go in with another coat of epoxy, it's going to completely cover them. So that's why I'm ignoring that right now. We're going to take our hot glue gun and we're just going to do little sections of glue. You don't want to do too long of a section because hot glue dries really quickly. And so since you have to hand place these pearls, you don't want to do a very long line of glue because it'll be dry by the time you're done. So I literally did the smallest of sections at a time. Okay. And don't worry about the little strings that I'm pulling off right there. Those are not going to stick to your tumbler. So even if you have a ton when you're done, you can just pull those off. Okay. Now you want to do this around the entire tumbler. Um, and I went ahead and placed the lid so that I could make sure that everything was flush and like it was going to look very like cohesive and like it was just bubbling over. So I highly recommend that you put the lid on while you're doing this part. And then once you have pearls all the way around the top of the rim, just kind of create little drips in whatever shapes that you want. This is your creation. There's no right or wrong way. You can make them drip down as far as you want. Okay. And I really think that we need to normalize drips with hot glue guns because this was so fun. It was so much faster than if I would have tried to do it with epoxy and then placing the pearls on top of the epoxy. So I'm obsessed with this method, guys. I highly recommend it. And so now um, just finish doing your drips however you want them. And like I said before, the really cool thing about using hot glue is that it dries fast. So literally as soon as the hot glue dried, I went in with a very fine paintbrush and I started applying my white dispersion color. Now you want to make sure that you base your color white Okay. And just be really careful when you get down to the fine details that are right up against the black paint. If you mess up, don't worry. Cause you can take a Q-tip with some rubbing alcohol and clean up the edges. It's really not that, that big of a problem. So don't worry too much. Um, but you want to make sure that you do that white, that white base, because you want to be able to fully cover the color of those pearls so that when you come back in with your, green color, it's going to be very vibrant and it's going to really pick up like, you know, because if you tried to do green over the color of these pearls, you wouldn't have a very bright green. Um, and I, it's funny because <laughs> I must have missed this step in art class, but I was having issues like before. And finally one day I was like, I'm going to try to do white first and then do my color over. And I was like, Oh wow, it's so much brighter. And like, I know you learned that shit in like elementary, but guys, I don't know why I didn't remember that, why I didn't know that, but <laughs> it is super important to make sure that the base is always white so that your next color can super duper pop, okay? So just go ahead and take your time, go around the entire drip, 
do, do the white paint, do it exactly how we did it on the topper. Like I said, it's super important that you don't lose those details. You want it to be bubbly and, you know, sassy, classy, bougie, ratchet. Like, so take your time, dippity dab, and make sure it looks super duper good. And then set this aside. Don't be impatient like me. Let it dry long enough. And then we're going to come back and we're going to add our green. I wanted to leave some of these parts out of the video because I feel like the video is so long and it's super redundant, but it was just super important to me that you guys fully understood how to make this cup just in case you guys wanted to recreate it, you know? So once our white paint is completely dry, we're going to take a fine paintbrush and we're going to go in right over that and we're going to go ahead and do our green, okay? <clears throat> now... It really didn't take as long as you would think, you guys, I promise. And if you get a little bit of white or green paint, it's okay. Just use alcohol and a, and a Q-tip to clean it up, okay? Now we're gonna come in and do our final coat of epoxy. Now, you'll see in a minute that once this is cured, those dimples that I created on accident by adding too much heat, they're completely covered and they're no longer visible, okay? And so when you want, when you do the drip part, make sure you do that part with your paintbrush because you wanna have really good detailing and you wanna have a very thin coat of epoxy. And for everything else, just use your finger. Make sure you push it all the way up right to where that drip is, okay? Make sure you get the handles, make sure you remove all the excess make sure you don't have pools of epoxy like piling up anywhere pop your bubbles let it sit for 24 hours and that's it you guys you are done clean it up once you're done um, and then this is the result that you have i hope that you guys like it i hope you guys had fun leave me a comment i love you so much and i'll see you on saturday